Welcome to Astro Weatherman. Hello, folks. This is the winter 2024 Astro Meteorology Forecast. Now, it's been a long time since I posted my last video, and that's for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the primary reasons, however, is that I was engaged in trying to test some theories, some new calculations that I've been working on in terms of trying to make this a whole lot more accurate in terms of the for excuse me, in terms of the forecasts and uh the information that I can bring to you guys. And it also involves um, some new um, ideas on earthquake forecasting that I really hope will really bring us some really good results. Now, I don't want to go on such a long sabbatical like I did. Um, I want to bring you guys into the experimentation process, into the testing process, and we're going to see what works and what doesn't work. And so this should be fun. It should be very interesting. Um, and we'll... We'll try to improve the accuracy and the information as we um, as we evolve, and uh, I think it'll be a really fun and really cool thing to evolve together in this on this journey. All right, so let's get started. This is winter 2024. Now, winter began when the sun moved into Capricorn on December the 21st of 2023. All right, and it's going to be there until, I believe, March the 20th uh, of 2024. So we're in the winter phase right now. Okay, we're a little late to the races, but that's okay. We can use and uh, the astrological, the planetary placements, and just see how winter has been evolving and how it's going to continue to go until uh, until March the 20th. All right, so we are still in a very strong El Nino pattern, the uh, South Pacific phenomenon where the Pacific Ocean waters and the currents heat up to a very strong um, intensity, which impacts the weather globally. All right. And so it can bring wild weather um, uh, to all parts of the globe. And, and, and ultimately, uh, this pattern is going to be with us for still Quite some time and we'll monitor it to see when it gets stronger and weaker and and how it will impact certain regions as well and of course the planets will amplify and uh, give us more information as to its effects so we're going to be studying that now when the um sun moved into capricorn it was in conjunction with a mercury retrograde which actually and very interestingly enough, brings the Mercury retrograde energy. Now, typically Mercury retrograde, when it goes in reverse, it affects the Earth on all of us for a couple of weeks. And but and then it goes away. And and basically what Mercury is, um, is a planet of communication and learning. Okay. And, uh, and so what happens is uh, it also can... Uh, work with technology and travel and uh, so all these um aspects of life can be affected uh, our methods of thinking and thought processes ideas etc um so when the sun moved into capricorn on december the 21st the start of winter and it was hooked up or conjunct um Mercury, um, a retrograde Mercury, it kind of gives us an entire season of a retrograde Mercury globally and personally. This is very interesting. Now, Mercury retrogrades have been known to bring technological disruptions, communication disruptions, misunderstandings, all these sorts of things. But Mercury retrograde can be a time of great problem solving, where we can solve a lot of really important problems in our lives and, and even globally. But it's also a time of truth telling where a lot of stuff can start coming out. So where a lot of people can start making mistakes. So on a global scale, we can start to see, you know, everything starting to happen in terms of, you know, media, government, um, uh, start making mistakes and some uh, maybe some uh, skeletons in the closet start coming out into the open and leading the public uh coming or i should say coming into the uh, public attention so this is going to be a very interesting season and this is gearing up for the spring and i can't wait to bring you the spring forecast because this is where two massive planetary conjunctions happen jupiter and uranus 
when they hook up, oh boy, stuff going to happen this spring. So we're going to, we'll get into that um, in the next uh, video. All right. So how does this Mercury retrograde affect the world and us uh, personally? All right. So the sun in Capricorn, that's when the sun moved into Capricorn at the start of the winter. Uh, so we're going to look at that. It uh, represents leadership, authority figures, and government. And Mercury symbolizes communication, information, and commerce. All right. So how is that going to affect um, the world? Well, let's start with how I think governments uh, and leaders and authority figures, and this is not just in like government in terms of a political sense, uh, but this is also in your businesses, in your corporate, in companies, corporations, these kinds of things. So Mercury retrograde is known for bringing back past issues. So in a mundane or worldly sense, this could mean that countries or leaders uh, might revisit or revise their decisions or previous decisions, especially. Now, this period could see the renegotiation of things like treaties or revising of laws or rethinking of strategies. OK, because there's going to be a lot of disruption there where people are not going to like certain policies and certain rules that are being put out there. So as you know, a Mercury retrograde and the upcoming Jupiter conjunction to Uranus. And there's another one, Pluto moving into Aquarius. We're going to see this uprising in society. So we're going to start to see things like protests really start to surface. Yeah, that's going to be and all over the world, and there's going to be a pushback against all these types of policies. This is going to be interesting. Now, there could be technological and trade challenges, because Mercury also rules technology and commerce. So it's retrograde um, motion, or when it's conjunct to the sun, um, might lead to technological breakdowns. That can happen. It's known to do that. Uh, there could be disruptions in trade or problems with transportation and communication infrastructure. So you're going to start to see problems with things like planes, trains, automobiles, and, you know, ships and, you know, all things transportation. Some problems are going to start to surface, showing us where there are issues that need to be fixed. All right. And as of the posting of this video, um, there... Uh, have already been problems with the airline industry in terms of indicate showing problems with aircraft um, and their their maintenance um, and their structure and these kinds of things. And that's just the beginning. There's a lot more coming up. Um, so yeah, just uh, watch for those problems with transportation as well as problems with communication infrastructure. Okay, and all these issues could have a ripple effect on the economy in general, right? So just watch for that. Now, there's going to be a big thing, especially especially Sun and Mercury. It's like public perception uh, with uh, the media, okay? Um, so when the Sun is conjunct to Mercury, especially in retrograde, it might indicate a period where the media and public opinion play a more significant role in shaping government policies, or the reputation of leaders even. There could be an increase in, in, in things like uh, miscommunications um, uh, and uh, stronger, which could lead to actually stronger uh, propaganda. Now that would lead to greater public confusion and skepticism of their leaders, okay? And all of this could lead to because Mercury rules the mind and intellectual, the mind and intellect, an intellectual awakening or an intellectual confusion. Okay. And this aspect, I guess it could signify a period where issues surrounding the news, information, and data become a lot more prominent. But the retrograde motion of Mercury, um, it could bring uh, uh, a lot more criticism and lead to the necessity to review a whole uh, a whole bunch of things, um, which could lead to potential rethinking of what and who to believe. 
of what is truth and what is a lie. So this is going to be really interesting. So there's going to be a lot of um, uh, reflection for societies. I think a whole bunch of societies are going to start reflecting on a collective level because this conjunction could prompt societies to reconsider what is valuable for them. Um, and especially in regards to their leadership. Okay. Uh, and so this is time where societies are going to begin to question their leadership, their laws and their values. All right. So this is time when any bad decisions that were made by leaders in the past or presently, they, it's going to come back to haunt them. And many of them are going to have to face accountability for their past actions and decisions. So, yeah, I think this is a time when this is going to start to open up that can of that can of worms. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's what we can expect for this winter season. We're going to start to see that begin to happen. All right. So, on a worldly level, get ready for some disruptions and the uh, opening up of eyes it's going to begin to happen um and i think there's going to be lots of information that's going to be leaking out from you know um sources that's going to uh well force people to reevaluate a whole bunch of things about government policies and our society in general it's going to be interesting all right so now how about um yourself personally well when mercury this energy is retrograde we do have to be careful about how we communicate um especially when it's dealing with important or sensitive matters but like i said um it's a good time to review your past decisions your past ideas especially anything that's unresolved this is a great time to resolve things as i said it's a great problem solving period so any you know, long-standing problems that you may have had with your partner, your friends, your family. Um, this could be an excellent time to finally fix those issues up and and begin to move forward um, in a more positive way. At the very least, um, come to an understanding. But uh, it, this is the chance to make things right wherever you can, right? So, yeah, do it. Take advantage of it. Now, just be aware, like if you're going to go on a trip or a vacation during the season, there could be snags in terms of travel plans because of the technological glitches, problems with transportation or travel delays. So those things can happen. Just be aware of that more than usual. I mean, it's always happening, but again, this could happen a little bit more than usual. All right. All right. And I think, don't be surprised also, um, yeah, if you are feeling the need to reevaluate your plans and your goals, like don't be surprised if you're thinking about, should I stay in this job? Should I, should I make a move? Should I, you know, where, in what direction do I think I, I feel I need to go? Um, so don't be surprised um, if those types of things come up a lot more. Now, because it's the Mercury conjunction, you know, happened when the sun was in Capricorn, and the Capricorn is going to, a lot of this reevaluation and thinking, um, you know, about direction is going to happen a lot in people's careers and jobs and in their professions and um, some core structure in their lives, but more so, I would say, uh, in, in, in those areas. Okay, um, so at the end of the day, I think um, during this season, it is also a really good time to become and get creative. I think creativity, especially when Sun is conjunct Mercury, even though it's retrograde, um, creativity is going to really peak for lots of people. So creative solutions, creative problem solving, you know, um, getting into these sorts of things. So don't be surprised if you all of a sudden come up with some really unconventional solutions to things. So this could be a really cool time to really get that flowing. All right. So that's it. That's the general energy for the season. And uh, let's get right to the weather and see what's coming up for your area in North America, Canada, U.S., and Mexico. Okay, folks, let's begin with uh, Western Canada. We're going to begin with B.C. 
And we're going to start with this black line here, and that is Pluto. And Pluto is an intensifier. So whatever planet it interacts with, it's going to intensify the effects of that other planet. All right, so what's happening with BC? What kind of planets, what kind of energy is Pluto going to be intensifying? Well, we're going to start with a silver line, and that's the moon. And we're going to start with... Uh, two factors. Uh, we're going to do temperature and moisture for the overall season. So first temperature, the moon is cold. This brown line all the way to the north, um, that's going to bring in all this Arctic air down. And this is going to be not only for the first half of the season, it's going to be for the entire season. Um, we're going to see cold, so cold Saturn, cold moon. And we're going to see far off to the west, Neptune, which is cooler. So cool, cold, cold. So overall BC, you're going to be dealing with, and even the Yukon and all this upper area, we're going to be dealing with uh, colder than um, in the Northwest Territories, colder than average temperatures for basically the majority of the season. In terms of moisture, the moon is wet, Saturn is wet, Neptune is wet. So we're going to see a whole bunch of moisture hit BC for basically the entire season, above average moisture, more rain, more snow. All right, so that's the winter season. Alberta, let's start with the temperature. So the first half of the season, uh, we're going to see the cold moon and we're going to see cold Saturn. So the first half of the season, you're going to be colder temperatures than normal. In terms of moisture for the first half of the season, we see moon, which is wet, and Saturn wet. So we're going to see more in the way of moisture, more snow and cold for the first half of the season. The second half of the winter season, we're going to see the pink line come in, which is Jupiter. In terms of temperature, Jupiter is warmer, and in terms of moisture, it is drier. So we're going to see uh, warmer, drier weather move in for the second half of the season of the winter. In uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, we've got for the first half of the season, we've in terms of temperature, we've got cold Uranus, that's this purple line here, and cold Saturn, the brown line. And so uh, colder temperatures for the first half of the season in terms of moisture, uh, Uranus is uh, a mixed uh, moisture. So half dry, half wet, and Saturn is all wet in the winter. So overall, more moisture than normal. So colder and wetter, more snow um, during the first half of the season. The second half of the season, we've got this pink line moving in. That's Jupiter, which is warmer in temperature and drier. So warmer, drier temperatures towards the second half of the season. All right, let's move on towards uh, eastern Canada. And so for the first half of the season, uh, we've got from Ontario and Quebec, we've got this red line. That's Mars coming in first. And Mars, in terms of temperature, is actually warmer. So a little milder, warmer temperatures than average. And in terms of moisture, it is drier. Now, here's the caveat with Mars. Mars likes to excite the atmosphere. So what it does is it will, um, overall, it will be drier, but it will bring in storm systems. And when it does, it will bring in heavy dumps of moisture. All right, so heavy snow periods. Um, but overall, drier and milder for the first half of the season. The second half of the season, we've got this brown line moving in, and that's Saturn. And Saturn is, in terms of temperature, colder and moisture, wetter. So we've got colder, wetter weather coming in for Ontario and Quebec for the second half of the season. And Saturn loves to bring a lot of storm systems. So watch for that happening. Um, a little bit more miserable um, second half of the winter season for Ontario and Quebec. In terms of the Maritimes, um, we've got a couple planets are happening first. So a mixed bag of weather between the red line, Mars, and which is warmer weather in terms of temperature and drier conditions. Um, and the blue line is Neptune, brings in wetter and cooler, cooler and wetter conditions. So we have these happening at the same time. So the Maritimes, you're going to have this really mixed bag of a uh, very you know warm stretch uh, stretches of warm drier weather and then stretches of really cold and uh wet really um uh heavy moisture coming down so it's going to be really the maritimes are going to be experiencing this extreme type of weather and uh off to newfoundland we're going to see the sun this orange line which is the sun which is warm and dry 
I'm interacting with uh, and um, Neptune, which is cold and wet. So um, in terms of the uh, the further east you go, I think when you get into Newfoundland, um, they're going to be experiencing uh, colder, wetter conditions in the first half of the season and warmer, drier conditions towards the um, second half of the season. But uh, in terms of PEI, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, I think these guys, are, your guys are going to be getting a really uh, mixed uh, bag of weather, extreme periods of warmer, drier weather and uh, colder, heavier moisture periods. It's going to be very like a roller coaster here. All right, that's Canada. Okay, folks, let's begin now with the USA. We're going to start off on the West Coast and Western regions. And we're going to start with this black line. That's Pluto. And Pluto is the intensifier. So whatever planet it interacts with, it is going to intensify that planet's uh, nature. Okay, and it's going to be interacting and intensifying with this gray line. And that is the moon. And the moon is in Capricorn uh, uh, when uh, the winter season started. So it's the moon is going to bring in a, uh, in terms of temperature, colder temperatures and moisture, wet. So cold and wet for this entire region. So most for basically entire season. So below average temperatures, higher than average moisture. All right, and then in this little corridor here from um, western Montana all the way down to Arizona, we've got, it's going to start with um, the gray line, which is the moon. And so cold temperatures and wet in terms of moisture. So colder, wetter to begin the uh, winter, uh, the first half of the winter season. And then the pink line comes in, Jupiter, and that's going to bring in uh, warmer temperatures and drier conditions. So warmer and drier the second half of the winter season. And this corridor, all the way from uh, eastern, sorry, western, yeah, eastern Montana, all the way down, uh, basically from the Dakotas down to Texas, we've got the first half of the season is going to be the planet, uh, this purple line, Uranus. And Uranus, in terms of temperatures, is cold. In terms of moisture, it's 50-50, half moist, half dry. So what we're going to have here is uh, mixed moisture. Uh, when moisture does come down, it's going to come down in heavy pockets. But overall, uh, I think it'll be near average in terms of moisture, but colder temperatures. And Uranus loves to bring in storm systems. So watch uh, first half of the winter season to bring in more storms. Jupiter... Uh, the pink line rolls in towards the second half of the winter season. That's going to bring warmer and drier conditions. So that's the second half of the season. Now, in the U.S. Midwest, basically from North Dakota, Minnesota, all the way down to Alabama, Louisiana, anyway, Mississippi, we've got the first planet uh, that is coming online is this brown line, and that is Saturn cold temperatures is what saturn brings and wet conditions so cold and wet so we're going to have a lot of moisture colder temperatures and low pressure systems with saturn saturn likes to bring in those storms for the first half of the season the second half of the season we've got this green line and that is venus and venus does like to warm temperatures up so it's going to bring milder conditions so more seasonable or average temperatures which is going to be much nicer than saturn and it is still a wet planet, so it's going to bring in still moisture. So throughout the entire winter season, it's just going to be wetter than normal. But it is second half of the winter season is going to bring milder temperatures. All right. Um, basically, yeah, from Illinois, you know, Florida, all the way up to New York and Maine, this entire eastern uh, part, uh, portion of the United States, we've got... Uh, we're going to start with the red uh, line right here, and that is Mars. So Mars is coming first um, for this part of the season, and uh, first half of the season. And temperatures with Mars is warm, so warmer than normal, and uh, overall drier than normal. But Mars does like to bring in the occasional storm systems, as it likes to excite uh, and activate the atmosphere. So when when uh, 
rain in the south and snow in the north hits, it's going to come down with intensity. But overall, drier and milder, warmer conditions for the first half of the season with passing storm systems. The second half of the season is going to see uh, Saturn, the uh, brown line come in. Saturn is colder and wet, so we're going to we're going to see um, yeah overall colder. Cooler to colder temperatures for the second half of the winter season, low pressure systems bringing and storms and heavier moisture towards the second half of the season. And there you go, USA. Okay, so let's begin with Mexico now and let's see what's going on with the planets. Okay, we're going to begin here, northwestern uh, Mexico, Baja California, and we're going to see uh, the first part of the season. We're going to see the line actually taking effect first and that's jupiter warmer temperatures drier conditions warmer and drier first half of the winter season the second half is going to be the silver or the gray line the moon which is um, in capricorn going to be colder uh, temperatures and wetter conditions we're going to see actually more moisture towards the second half of the winter season or at the very least cloudier days and um, more humid days uh, and cooler conditions toward the second half of the season. All right. So then as we move pretty much the entire, uh, the brunt of the entire country here of Mexico, um, we're going to start with uh, Uranus. And Uranus is the first uh, one in effect uh, for uh the first half of the season. And Uranus brings cooler temperatures, generally speaking. Um, so in the north, you're going to find much colder conditions. Um, and uh, it is going to be colder through the central, higher elevation regions, no doubt, uh, in terms of temperature. That's what Uranus brings. And in terms of moisture, a 50-50. So there's definitely going to be moisture. So uh, we think around average our seasonal moisture conditions, not too dry, but not too wet. And then the second half of the winter season, we've got the pink line, Jupiter rolling in. And Jupiter is going to uh, bring uh, uh, much warmer weather. Jupiter is warm, hot, and the further south we go, and dry in terms of moisture. So we'll hot and dry weather towards the second half of the winter season. And then we go to the uh, Yucatan Peninsula area. In the Yucatan, we have um, the first planet in play is going to be the brown line here, Saturn, which is temperature-wise is cooler to colder uh, normally. But the further south we go, Saturn does get warmer. So um, I, we're going to say that the Yucatan Peninsula is going to experience hotter winter weather the first half of the winter will be warmer uh or hotter than than normal and uh, however saturn uh now saturn does bring drier temperatures the further south it goes uh, drier temperatures <laughs> drier weather drier conditions warmer temperatures and drier weather conditions overall okay and first half of the season the second half of the season of the winter season we've got uh, the green line venus in play and venus is in terms of temperatures it's mild so it's not it's definitely going to be warm uh, and venus is definitely humid it's wet planet so it's going to bring a lot more moisture a lot more rain into this area for the second half of the winter season all right there you have it mexico okay folks there you go there you have it winter 2024 um I'm going to try my best to put videos up more frequently from this point forward, um, especially the spring 2024 forecast. This is going to be a very interesting, very, very powerful planetary alignment that's happening that's going to be affecting the world, the Jupiter um, conjunction to Uranus. So I uh, lots to talk about in terms of how that's going to be affecting all of us personally and the world in general. All right. So please stay tuned for that. I hope to have that out sometime in early March. So yeah. All right. Thank you all again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, please like, and subscribe. Uh, always deeply appreciative of, of that as well. And we will see you soon. All right. Take care.